my tattoo. It's my logo. American badass. That's pretty badass. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like stoner talk. <laughs> it is. It is stoner talk. Most of my conversations are stoner talk, like high level. Dude, I used to be Tom Petty's weed dealer in a sense. Like he would come to town. He married a girl from uh, Saginaw, Michigan. I forget her name. Great, great girl. And they would come to, you know, outside Detroit where I lived, and I'd get this call like, hey, can you get Tom some weed? And I'd be like, fuck, I'll take him some weed. So I'd call some of my brother's friends to get some weed. And I'd be like, this is fucking awesome because I love Tom Petty. I didn't really know him. So I'd go up there and drop the weed off, and I'd be in his dressing room, and, like, he'd be like, so what's up, man? I'd be like, nothing. And I'm like, we have nothing in common. This, this guy's so fucking high. <laughs> I might have been tuned up on a couple beers or something. <laughs> and I'm like, well, that sucked. <laughs> I guess I'll just enjoy the music. <laughs> was this before or after you were doing music? Oh, this is when I was a big star. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. No shit. Yeah, I was all excited. And you're hanging with Tom Petty. Not really. I was just taking him weed, well, trying, know, trying to hang out with him. You know, that's how Tom Petty died. Somebody oh. got him some pills. Oh, was it fentanyl? Yeah. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Yeah, he, uh, I don't remember what his, his injury was, but he was hurting, and uh, a roadie got him some fentanyl. Terrible. Yeah, fuck that's goodness. how Prince died, too. Yeah, I remember, I've heard that in the yep, elevator. Same thing, pain. I, we all know people that, have, mm -hmm. it's a travesty. It's, it's a horrible unreal. thing. Well, let's just go right at the border. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's the border, but it's also the, the opioid crisis that was created by the Sackler family. I mean, those motherfuckers just got a, a giant percentage of the population hooked on heroin. It's some evil shit, man. Fight. Those fucking people are still running around, too. Yeah, in case you were ever thinking about quitting drugs, fentanyl should seal the deal. Yeah. That should seal the deal. Yeah. I know a lot of people it has. They were like, you know, I was still an experimental cocaine user, this, that, and the other. They were like, when that shit came up, that was it. It's like, you, you know, I had some friends tell me they were going to buy a testing kit, this, that, and the other. I was like, yeah, that's probably time to yeah, time to move on. If you're buying a testing kit to make sure you don't die, you probably should reconsider <laughs> your options. <clears throat> Might want to revisit whiskey. Yeah. Weed's not bad. Weed and whiskey, are, it's a good combination. You don't really, you don't want to go down that road. Although, I've heard it's awesome. Not fentanyl, but cocaine. I have not tried it. I've never done it. But everyone I know who does it tells you not to do it because it's awesome. Mm, I had a good run. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't too many problems. <laughs> you know, in the, in the older days, you know, it's kind of just following the handbook of rock and roll. Yeah. It's like your chapter 14, get some blow. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. We, we had fun. Nobody. I've seen people get all fucked up and lose their minds on it, but I know quite a few people in my position like okay we had some fun when we were younger and you know at some point you know kind of a weekend warrior type thing mm -hmm. don't let it interfere with business and engagements and things you have to do can't say i, I was batting a thousand but pretty good average you did pretty good yeah considering it it all worked out pretty well and i'm not advocating for it at, at any level I'm <laughs> i don't just, think anybody is that's that's my honest experience like hey you know i'm Came out okay. That's the thing. There's people that'll tell you they're weed advocates. There's there's no like coke advocates. There's no people like coke fixed my life. <laughs> <laughs> I never got anything done. All of a sudden, I was doing coke and starting businesses. Is weed fixing <clears throat> lives? We can fix people. <laughs> Depends on who you are. I know if you're sick and yeah, for a guy like me, shit. weed's a good drug. A guy like me, weed just like. Whew, my brother's a huge weed smoker. Yeah, and I'm always, and he'll always be like, you know, for golfing or some shit. And I'm drinking my beers, having my fun. I'm always like, you know, you drive. And I'm always like, maybe you fucking shouldn't be driving. He's just fucking stoned out of his mind sometimes. And I'm like, yeah, I don't like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm a little nervous, and I'm tuned up already. <laughs> yeah, for some people, weed makes you nicer, calms you down, makes you a little more sensitive. A little more compassionate. Yeah, everything affects people differently. Yeah. I've drank tequila three times. Only three? I've been, I've been to jail three times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. do, do the math. <laughs> Kid Rock, no oh. drink tequila. <laughs> so what do you think tequila does to you differently? Ah, it just makes me want to punch you right in the mouth. Really? <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> that's, that's it. 
<laughs> the Mexican influence. Like, hey, Kid Rock, nice to see you. Like, wham. <laughs> like, what the fuck's the matter with him? Why well, tequila? Like, what? what I have no change? idea. What does it do? It just makes you hyper? It makes me fucking hyper, violent, fucking. Hey, you know, it, it could have been a combination of maybe those few times I drank it. I was just in a headspace where, you know, you right. could be in different headspaces when you're doing different things. And you could blame it on the tequila. <laughs> But, it's really but just... I kind of have a rule that I, I really try not to like, you know, I, I've really mellowed out in the last 10 years or so, but I really try not to get tuned up unless I'm in a good spot. Yeah. In a good mood, with good people. Right. They don't want to be like, you know, all worked up, you know, after watch Fox News for six hours and just fucking <laughs> ready to fucking, you know, slay the beast and start pounding whiskey and go to the club. Dude, if you watch <laughs> Fox News for too long, you will think it's the end of the world. Oh, I do, and it is. It might be. <laughs> it really might be. Did you see the fucking Tim Dillon thing that I posted yesterday? Yeah. It's legit. Yeah, no, it was something brand new. Is that new, the gay comedian? Yeah. He's yeah. fucking great. He's hilarious. But uh, he, he wrote, uh, he had a picture with a girl. He said, I'm getting married. The homosexuality thing was uh, just a phase. And R RFK Jr. writes to him, uh, she's a beautiful lady. I can see how she ungayed you, Tim. <laughs> the guy's running for president. Fucking great. Amazing. It's awesome. In that sense, it's an amazing time. He don't scare me. No, he shouldn't scare you. He doesn't scare me. He should do the opposite of scare you. Yeah. It should scare you the opposition to him. Because if people listen to what he says and you pay attention to what he says and you actually research what he says, he's telling the truth. Mm -hmm. It's just we've been fucked over and lied to for so long that he seems like a crazy person. Look at that. <laughs> She's a beautiful angel, Tim. Easy to see how she <laughs> ungayed you. <laughs> Ungay. <laughs> Fuck, I learned something. I haven't been here five minutes. <clears throat> My new favorite word. Usually I'm just using gay inappropriate all the time. You know, yeah. like, oh, that's fucking gay. You know, someone's like, oh, you're so insensitive. I'm be like, that's so ungay. <laughs> yeah, it used to be a thing that we would say. Something's gay. Or it used to be, imagine like from the time of the Flintstones. The Flintstones was we had a gay old time. Do you remember playing Smear the Queer when you were a kid? I never played that. What is it? You, just, you give somebody the football and everyone tries to tackle them. Like in oh. grade school, you just ran around. We didn't even know what queer meant. Well, that's the name of the game was Smear the Queer. I never played that. Did you play that, Jamie? Yep. Yeah? Sure. <laughs> you from the Midwest? <laughs> yeah, he's from Ohio. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they didn't have that where I grew up. Where'd you grow up? Boston. I mean, Fuck, I'm sure they you, had you, it. Fuck, I would think it was invented in Boston. <laughs> <laughs> I, I lived a fucked up life. Not not fucked up, but just my high school. Right.